When you buy brushes, and a lot of students are asking me, so you know what kind of brushes I should get, and um, and since this is all part of the painting process, is like what kind of supplies do we use? How do we like tone our canvases? How do we, what kind of canvases we should buy? You know, this is again my power to create class, and part of the power to create class is a lot of these fundamental things. Now, for some of you that did the power to create class, it might be a little bit of a repeat, but get that sometimes now since you've been painting for a while you probably will pick up some new information so don't listen like oh I've heard this all before and then check out <laughs> actually look for new opportunities to ask new questions um, talking about brushes there's a lot of different kinds of brushes that you can buy out there artificial hairs natural hairs primarily oil painters paint with bristle brushes the reason why we paint with bristle brushes is because the canvas is like sandpaper. You don't want to go and take a $200 sable brush and start scrubbing on a surface that within a, a 10 minutes will grind that thing down to nothing. Sable brushes are pretty much for watercolor, watercolorists. And they can, you know, they'll spend $200 on a brush and they'll own it for the rest of their life and they'll leave it to their children. Um, oil painters are lazy. And for the most part, you can almost bet that every oil painter in the country has their oil brushes sitting there for a week with paint on them unclean. Okay? And when you spend $200 for a brush and you don't clean it once, um, you pay for it at the end. And once a sable brush kind of gets paint lodged into it and dried up in it, it's not a good investment. So bristle brushes can take that, that um, cleaning, uh, that little cleaning thing a little bit better than most. Um, so uh, the way you tell the difference between uh, oil painting brushes and watercolor brushes is that uh, oil painting brushes have long handles. Okay. Watercolor brushes have short handles. And the reason for that is that oil painters want to get back on their, on their brushes and stand back from their painting. Watercolorists pretty much work on a flat surface and they work up close. As an oil painter, you always want to look, even if you're doing a detail brush, I mean detail work or buying a detail brush, always look for long handles because in a jar you'll see the little detail brushes stand out. Um, when you buy the little ones they tend to kind of disappear and they're not quite there where you can reach for them. So you always want to buy long handle brushes when you buy them. Um, synthetic over natural, I love natural fibers. I love sable brushes and I try to take care of my brushes as much as I can but I'm as lazy as all the other oil painters out there. <laughs> And periodically I walk away from my easel and two days later I realize I haven't washed my brushes. So, um, so I have kind of gone into some of the synthetics. And the reason why I wanted to talk to you today is that um, this black gold brush that's out, it's a really inexpensive brush. And they're fabulous. They are workhorses. They're um, beautifully done. They find their, their, their tip over and over and over again, both in the detail, uh, small brushes, and in the flat brushes. These brushes here constantly come to a wonderful chiseled edge. Um, they cost a third of what a sable brush, or even a, a quarter of what a sable brush will cost. And I'm not quite sure what the costs are on them, but. Um, what you, I suggest to do, and I'm in love more with square brushes as opposed to the filberts. The filberts are these round brushes, okay? Now, my philosophy with brushes is that if I buy a brush like this, and I use it long enough, it eventually will look like this, okay? They will eventually wear down. So I do try to buy um, uh, square brushes. I do like to use the edges on brushes. These give you these razor sharp edges when you're doing barns and things. They're absolutely wonderful. Now you have brights which are shorter and then you have flats that are longer. Now my philosophy again is that if you buy the flats eventually they'll wear down to be the brights. So a good way to start is to buy two, four, six, eight, and ten in the sizes 
of the flats and let them wear down into all these different, different um, sizes. They're absolutely wonderful. You still need to have bristle brushes and it's a good idea that when you're um, especially laying in a, in a you know, beginning a painting and laying it in, you want to make sure that you're, you start off with bristle brushes because the canvas, and we'll talk about the canvases shortly, the canvases will wear them out, even these brushes. But once you get going with these brushes, they're absolutely wonderful. They're a good solution um, over the sable. Now, if you want to buy sable brushes, if your thing is to actually invest in some sable brushes, I would save the sable brushes for more detail brushes. And the brushes that I would buy that I just absolutely love are the Escadas. Escada brushes are absolutely, huh? Yeah, Escada. I don't, I'm not quite sure. But the Escada brushes are absolutely wonderful. They're one of the finest brushes that are on the market today. And I highly, highly, highly recommend them. They also make bristle brushes. They make watercolor brushes and oil brushes. But their Escada brushes are, especially the detail ones, are really fabulous. Now, a lot of people complain about them because they buy them and all of a sudden they have to buy them again. Okay. They think that they wear out, but they don't. Not m any more than any other brush. It's just that a small detail brush doesn't have that many hairs. And if you're going over a surface like sandpaper, they do wear out. And it's completely a fallacy that when you buy, a, buy brushes, that you're going to buy them and keep them forever. <laughs> They're not heirlooms. No. In watercolors, possibly. You know, you can kind of take care of them. Paper doesn't really, you know, um, do what canvases do to brushes. Um, you have to replace your brushes. And I would rather have you uh, buy brushes than buy high quality paints. High quality paints are great and they're wonderful, but they really shouldn't be the thing that you invest in. Brushes are something you should constantly be refreshing and constantly getting new. Most of you I'm not singling out, well, I'll single out these two over here. But most of you, you used to be in that category. Most of you, I know it's like, what, what, what. most of you, the, <coughs> what's holding you back are your brushes. Your brushes are your sword. And if your sword isn't sharp, if it's not ready to go, Y your brush strokes will show it. Okay. Can't remember. Are you in that category? You keep no, good. No, you I, you I, keep I, good I, care I, of your brushes. Unfortunately, I pay through the nose for my brushes. Yeah, you keep good care of your brushes. In fact, you told me about that. But um, but most of you could replace your brushes more often. So on Christmas and and uh, your birthday, what do you want? Brushes, 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 brushes. Okay.